Have you ever wondered why you're getting uncontrollable cravings even right after you eat a big meal? Well, after 15 years of coaching entrepreneurs and business leaders on how to lose fat, transform their bodies, and manage cravings, I've learned the exact issues causing those unstoppable urges and how to actually resolve them. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the hormones that are driving cravings, along with four critical issues behind that bottomless pit feeling, and I'll give you eight really simple tips to address those issues so you can eliminate your cravings once and for all. Now, before we jump into those helpful tips, it's really important that you understand why you're getting cravings, and it has a lot to do with two really important hormones in your body. And if you don't address them, you're gonna keep losing control and mindlessly binge on hyperpalatable foods. So let's quickly go over them both. Now, ghrelin is a hormone that's produced in your stomach that helps you regulate your short-term hunger. It tells your brain that it's time to eat. And when you eat and you fill your stomach up, ghrelin levels are reduced, which helps suppress your appetite. Appetite. But there's another hunger regulating hormone that's mostly produced by your fat cells and that affects your long-term appetite. And it happens to tell your brain that you're full. It's called leptin. So ghrelin tells your brain that you're hungry and leptin tells your brain that you're full. That's a pretty big oversimplification, but the key here is that they both play really important roles with short and long-term appetite control. But things can get a little weird though if there's any dysregulation with either of the hormones, which is actually pretty common. For example, ghrelin not only only increases overall hunger, but can also influence preferences for hyperpalatable carbohydrate-rich foods, which is part of the body's mechanism to ensure that it gets a really quick energy, especially during times of fasting or calorie restriction. Now, things can also get thrown off with leptin too. Oftentimes, people who have more fat cells who are also obese can experience leptin resistance, where the body doesn't respond well to leptin signaling. So despite having high levels of leptin, the brain doesn't receive the signal to stop eating. So why are my ghrelin and leptin levels out of whack and why am I getting these cravings? Well, again, there's four issues to consider that can be causing this to happen. So let's go over each of them. First, you need to look at your digestion. One of the biggest problems that most people have are issues with leaky gut and overburdened liver and problems with pathogens or an unbalanced microbiome. And these issues are extremely common for almost everyone. Second, you might be dealing with some vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Third, your macros are probably off. And fourth, your circadian rhythm is wrecked. So you might not be sleeping enough. You might be getting poor quality sleep. It might be hard to fall asleep or you're waking up frequently throughout the night. And just so you know, the cumulative effect of these four things is increasing stress and the stress hormone cortisol, which can help contribute to the dysregulation of leptin and ghrelin. Now, if you don't address these four things though, this could be completely disastrous and good luck trying to get rid of your cravings, but good news. I'm going to help you figure out exactly how to tackle these problems. So let's go over eight simple and straightforward tips to help you finally eliminate your cravings. So when it comes to addressing issues with your gut, there's about 20,000 different things that you can do, but let's just go over three of the heaviest hitters. First, you cannot ignore this one at all. If your body can't utilize glucose properly, which often stems from problems with your digestive system, you're going to have a really hard time dealing with your cravings. And one of the most important things you can do is get rid of refined seed oils and omega-6 polyunsaturated fats. This is because polyunsaturated fats like linoleic acid can impair liver function, which can further impair glucose utilization along with the clearance of leptin and ghrelin. Also, impaired liver function can contribute to increases in cortisol. And remember, when cortisol levels are high, it can further dysregulate leptin and ghrelin, which is going to help drive that poor appetite control. Another thing that impairs liver function, as you know, is alcohol consumption. And this is kind of a no-brainer because everyone knows that alcohol is horrible for liver function, but it's especially bad if you've been consuming those omega-6 fatty acids that I just talked about. And this is because when alcohol and omega-6s are combined, they increase the susceptibility of liver damage and fatty liver. Also, when people drink alcohol, they tend to crave the worst, most horrible, but also most delicious stuff. Now, another thing that's gonna help with digestion is to stop eating enriched and fortified foods foods. Why is that? Well, iron fortified foods can contribute to increased unbound iron, which can damage the lining of your gut, alter your gut microbiome, and also cause the proliferation of pathogens in your gut. And the iron can also make its way into your fat cells and impair glucose metabolism too, which again 
is horrible for cravings. Now, when it comes to the most common enriched and fortified foods though, those are gonna be almost all processed carbs like breads, pastas, cookies, muffins, and pizza. So if you do those three things, that's gonna be a great start, but remember, cravings can also be caused by vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So how do you address that though? Now, the best way of making sure that you're getting all your vitamins and minerals is by doing two things. First, you need to make sure that you're eating single ingredient whole foods that are super nutrient dense that also contain a wide spectrum of vitamins and minerals. And if you're doing this, but still getting cravings, it might be worth trying to use a food tracking app and logging your food for a little bit. For example, I personally like to use the app called Chronometer where I can log my food and check to see if I'm getting all my vitamins and minerals. If I see that I'm low in some, what do I do? Do I go out and fill those gaps with supplements? No, absolutely not. I'm gonna try to find natural sources of those vitamins and minerals through food and create balanced meals that allow me to fulfill all those micronutrient needs. And if I'm still missing out on some of those vitamins and minerals, then I'm gonna try to find some supplements that come from whole foods like Kamu Kamu for vitamin C or nutritional yeast for B vitamins. The reason for this is that they're naturally occurring, which means they're gonna be better absorbed by your body. Now, once you've figured out your micronutrients, you need to factor in your macronutrients. So what's the best way to stay fuller for longer periods of time? Well, protein is pretty filling, especially when it comes from animal sources, but how much do you need to eat to impact your ghrelin and leptin and reduce your cravings? Well, if you wanna know how much I think you should be eating, I have a macronutrient calculator that you can download in the description down below that'll give you protein targets based on your height, along with some other simple details on your carbohydrate and fat intake as well. You also get access to my newsletter where I'll give you actionable fat loss tips every single week. But if you wanna take a lazier approach, a medium to high protein diet, which is about 30% protein along with medium to lowish fats and carbs is gonna work great. Now there's another thing that's sabotaging your appetite though, and you're never gonna guess what it is. Well, did you know that light can positively and also negatively affect your appetite? Tim, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. No, it doesn't. Actually, yes, it does. So sunlight, especially in the morning, helps regulate the body's production of melatonin, the hormone that controls sleep-wake cycles. And proper melatonin regulation can influence the production of both leptin and ghrelin. And this means that balanced melatonin levels can lead to better hunger regulation and reduced cravings. Not only that, but when UV light touches your skin, it produces a polypeptide called POMC, which is broken down into a smaller peptide called alpha MSH, which can then activate receptors in your brain and tell it that you're full. But wait, there's more. Alpha MSH can also tell your body to increase energy expenditure. So sunlight literally reduces your appetite, can support leptin regulation, and also helps you lose weight. But there's another huge problem that you're very likely dealing with right now. The artificial blue light from all your devices and your light bulbs has the exact opposite effect. Those light sources are actually causing dysregulation of melatonin, which can make it harder for us to fall asleep and also contribute to less overall sleep and poor quality sleep. This can then lead to increases in that stress hormone cortisol that we previously went over, which again is linked to increased sugar cravings, impaired leptin and ghrelin regulation, and fat accumulation around the waist. But remember, one of the easiest ways to control your cravings is by prioritizing protein. And if you want to download my free macronutrient calculator, check it out in the description down below. And if you want to know some foods that you should never, ever, ever eat, watch this video right here where I'm going to show you four of the worst foods and ingredients that you're very likely eating right now.